Hey you guys, I'm Courtney Crosby and in this video we're going to be looking at these nail art liner gels. Let's check it out. So I got these for Christmas this year from my loving husband with my guidance, of course. I've seen a few people recommend them. They're from Rargesim which is annoying that I, they have a name that isn't a word. I don't know what you're supposed to call it. RAR, J-S-M, R-E-R, J-S-M. I don't know. But we're going to call them Rargesim because that sounds funny. Um, I tried these earlier on some firework now, so you can check out that video if you're interested. And I am quite impressed with the polishes themselves, but less impressed with the brushes in the bottles. So let's just jump in and see what's up with them. Uh, they come in 12 different colors. I'm only going to be looking at the gold and the silver and the white, uh, maybe the black, and then I'll pick a couple of colors. I used this one in the fireworks, so I won't look at that one. I used that one and that one. These are really bright. Let's use some of these paler ones and I'll do kind of like a swirly swoopy design because that seems to be very popular just now so I'm going to set those up there I've painted some nails in preparation so when I'm doing nail art I like to have really fine lines I don't like it when the lines are too big this is an example of how fine I like my gold gel to be this is a stamping gel that I used from Born Pretty I'm really really fussy when it comes to nail art gels so I'm interested to see how good I can get these to be I really like this one from Born Pretty so that's going to be difficult for them to match that um, this is a design that I've done countless numbers of times people really enjoy it and this one that I did here was actually quite a few years ago and I used just regular boring old white gel polish that didn't work very well but um, I've gotten better at this design over the years so we'll, oops, we'll do that as well and then on the black nail I didn't mean to paint that nail black I meant to paint it white so I don't know what we're going to do on that one and on the white one is where I'll use these two colors because usually colors pop better when you put them over white so maybe we'll do them over white and we'll do them over black and see what the difference is I don't know all right let's just jump in and start with the gold now as I said before the polishes seem pretty good but the brushes really aren't very thin I mean they are liner brushes so maybe they'd work good for like a plaid design or what the hell is going on with this one can't be too sure there must have got bent in the bottle these are brand new I've only just used them this morning for the first time so I'm not sure what that's all about but that's annoying already it's not a good start for you Rargesim let's just get most of the polish off this is what I do when I'm doing a design so I'm going to try to recreate this little star here so what I did for that was made a circle in the middle of the nail I need more so here we go and I mean this is looking fine but already it's not the same as my stamping gel it's not as pigmented and it's it's not going to be it's not going to be as good but it will be fine for most things just not really really detailed stuff I guess so here's my circle now I'll take all the polish off the brush again and I'm going to try and drag it out into this really thin line with this brush it is a really small brush uh, so let's just see if I can get it it's not bad with the right amount of control 
probably it will be fine. Uh, but I mean, I'm doing this on a tip, not a human. Everything's always harder on humans because they tend to move and whatever. So it's always a bit more challenging, but it is working fairly well. Not as good as my other gel and probably if I was going to do really detailed stuff, I wouldn't use this gold. It isn't as opaque as I want it to be. It's quite clearly um, a clear gel with much gold glitter in it, which is fine. But this stamping gel that I have there that I keep banging on about uh, is completely opaque and even the finest line has a lot of definition. That's not too bad, you guys. Now I wonder if it would look any different if I used my striping brush. So let me try, maybe I'll just on this side do some really thin lines and see if I can make it super duper thin. I have some here that I already used this morning. So just put a little bit on my brush. Hmm. Try and make these go. I have better control with this tiny striping brush and actually I could probably tidy this up like this and be relatively happy with it. This is much easier than using the brush that it came with and I'm getting better, thinner lines indeed. So this isn't bad, you guys. This would work for most designs um, and most people would probably be very happy with this. I understand that I'm really fussy so maybe this is really good for most people. You can see I'm dragging it out and it is going super duper thin, just not with that brush that it came with. There. That looks pretty good actually. Now let's just finish it off by putting in some dots. I'll need a little bit more polish on my palette. So I'll just put some dots at the end of the star points. Okay. So that is the results from the gold. It's definitely, um, well, it's a different color to this gold that I have over here as well, but it's worked really well considering um, I will use this, but probably not with the brush that it came with for detailed stuff. So I'll put that in the light to cure. Now let's look at the blue nail and try and do this um, design here. So this design works really well if the polish is pigmented, it covers up the blue with just one coat. You don't wanna be going in with several coats for this. So I'll take the white and just put a little bit more on my palette. Now that brush isn't bent, as you can see. Probably just a problem with the gold itself. Now, I'm not going to even bother trying to use the brush that comes with the polish because it won't, it's not thin enough for this, especially if it's only a small fingernail. 
you need you need a thinner brush so it's pooling at the end of my bristles there which is annoying I hate it when gels do this usually the thicker the gel the less it pools into a tiny little ball so I do find that when that happens I have to continually prime my brush and just make sure that I have even coverage the whole way down the nail or else you're going to have a section on the nail where the big blob first goes and that bit's going to be uh, thicker than the rest. So first I'm going to go the whole way down the one side and just make an X on the nail. Um, so yeah, this is fine. That's it. It's just fine. It's not great. I wouldn't say like, wow, this is amazing. I have a white gel polish that would work better than this from Kenny. Um, but this is fine. Probably be easier if I had a bigger, longer striping brush. It's not completely opaque though, you guys. I'm having to go back through and put on more gel. So for comparison purposes, I'll, I'll do the sides with this Rargesim gel paint and then I'll use the regular white gel polish that I use for painting nails and see how much better that is because I reckon that one's going to be even better than this but I mean it's fine that's exactly what it is it's just fine but when you're trying to do Pinterest perfect Instagram perfect nails fine is not good enough for me So that is how the Rargesim, <laughs> I love that, the Rargesim white covers. It's fine, it does the job. There are some spots around the edges of those lines that are not opaque and you probably can't see it on video and most people probably wouldn't notice it anyway. But I'm gonna cure that and then I'm gonna go in and show you what it looks like with another white gel just so we can compare. Okay, so this is the white that I have from Canny. I use this for just painting regular nails if I wanted a full cover white nail and it's like seriously mind blowing how good this white gel polish is. So um, probably it's going to be better than this one. I can already tell just by looking at it on the palette, it's thicker, it's more opaque and it's a, a deeper white if that's actually a thing. So here I'll put some on my brush. And it too pools into a little ball, so it's not super thick. Um, but let's have a look. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily say that's any better than the Rogersim. In fact, surprisingly, I think the Rogersim covers better than this is, which is surprising because that's my favorite white gel polish. So I'm surprised and a little bit embarrassed at that. Um, I have one other white gel that I use for super detailed stuff, and that's from Lisa Kahn and I'm so running out it's not even funny anymore how very little of this gel I have left but let me get some on my brush and I'll show you guys what my expectations are for a white gel liner and maybe we'll be able to see why um, 
I would prefer not to use this white liner paint for fine detail. So this is it. That's all I could gather on my brush from my pot. It's super duper thick um, gel paint and you can get really, really thin lines with it. Not like these ones where if you want it to cover up completely, you need to have quite thick lines. This is the kind of white gel liner that I'm used to and that I would prefer to use. So this white gel paint from Lisa Con, this is what I would call like an amazing product. The Roger Sim is fine, as you can see it does the job and it's just that, it's just fine. You won't be able to get super crisp, fine detailed lines like, like these two that I've done here. I don't know, maybe it doesn't look any different on video to you guys but for me definitely in real life I can see the difference between this Lisa Con white gel paint and the Roger Sim and the Canny. Looking back the Canny is probably the worst of them all but honestly that's my favorite gel for full cover nails. This is fine maybe with some practice I would be able to do this better but I'll still be using my white gel liners from Lisa Con because that just looks crisper. It's thinner. I could go even thinner than that if I wanted to, whereas I wouldn't be able to do that with the Roger Sim. I'll just show you. I bet I could get even between these two lines a really thin line and I wouldn't be able to do that with this Roger Sim gel paint. Let's see. Maybe I would actually. I'll probably embarrass myself here and be able to do it as well. Let's see. Yeah, I can. Shut up, Courtney. You don't even know what you're talking about, God's sake. So, I mean, you guys, this is fine. It's good gel paint. It's it's nice. But it's it's still not as crisp on this side as it is on that side. So like yeah, this is good. You can get thin lines with it. Um it's really quite good actually. I take back my previous comments. Uh, okay. Let me just try it one more time, make sure I'm not like tripping out. So I'll literally just put the tiniest bit on the brush. Okay, so you can get really thin detailed lines with this Roger Sim. You know, I, I take it back. It's a really good white gel liner. Is it as good as Lisa Con's? No, it's not. But for most people, this would be absolutely fine. So let's put that in the light to cure. Now then, we've done the fine details. We know that it works. You can get thin lines with it. Um, it covers up just fine. Let's see what the, how bright the colors are. So, oh, this is nice. This is a very neon green, yellow green type color. Holy moly, that's bright. I'm disappointed with the brushes, you guys. I wish they were thinner, but I guess if you need a thinner brush, you can always use a striping brush, but it, it is a thin brush to be fair, just not quite as thin as my striping brush. Now let's do, let's get some polish on and see what the brushes act like when you want to do like a 
a pattern. So let's go They have a good bend to them. It is really flexible. It's easy to do a curve. And this bright green is a very nice color. I'm digging that. It's covering just fine. I seem to say that a lot in this video. It's just fine. I think these are just fine. I wouldn't say they're amazing or whatever, but you know, what did they cost? 32 pounds for 12 colors. So that's a bit expensive, if I'm honest. I begrudge paying that much for gel paints, but that's the going rate, I guess. Oh, it's just expensive. We're gonna try the the pink one next to the green. That green is proper glowing in the lamp. Um, if you were gonna wear these to a nightclub or something that had UV lights or black lights, you would be very bright indeed. Okay, let's put on some pink and I'll just do the same. Holy moly, that's bright. I thought the other one was bright, this one, um, but this is actually more of a neon color. I like it. So one thing I will say about the brushes actually, at the end of the brush, if there's no polish on it, it's kind of like it opens up and is jaggy. It it's, must be cut straight across at the very tip. A good nail art brush would taper down at the point so that when there was very little polish on it, um, you'd be able to get that really crisp line because the brush would be tapering down. So let's see. I'm going to try and follow this. It's not bad. The coverage on this neon isn't great. If you were doing like multiple layers, you'd probably want to um, do like layer up each color. But that is just fine. So I think the the consensus for me about these gel liners is that they're fine. I wouldn't say they're amazing, uh, but I have tried some really good stuff over the years. So I'll show you all the colors individually and then that will be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope it was useful. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments and I will be back again very shortly with you guys for another nail video. I'll see you next time.